Father's Day is just around the corner, and you probably need a gift for your hairy dad. Make your dad proud this year and get him in yourself the Manscaped Lawnmower 4.0. You heard that right, the Lawnmower 4.0. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code DTR at manscaped.com. Aaron Donald creates the fumble. Goff oh, goes crashing yes, into the end zone. It is intercepted by Jalen Ramsey. Robert Wood, touchdown. Picked off by John Johnson. Touchdown, Tyler Higby. Cooper Cup walks it out of the air. Henderson with a good run and a first down still on his feet. Touchdown, Van Jefferson. Everett in stride. Wow. For the Lombardi. All right, guys, welcome back to Downtown Rams. As always, I'm your host, Alexis Kraft. Joined here with my co host, Jake Ellenbogen. And I want to apologize up front, guys. I'm still having microphone technology issues. So I am using a microphone that's not as good as the one I normally use. And there is a lot of background noise going on um, at my house right now. So please bear with me. Uh, But Jake and I wanted to make sure that we came to you guys uh, with another episode. And today we're going to be talking about just NFL free agency in general. Uh, Last episode, we touched on the Rams, potential free agent pickups. uh, And, you know, obviously it, it is a little bit late in quote unquote free agency season. So there's not a ton of free agency news going on, but there are a couple of big stories that we can hit on. And Jake, I think that we should start with the Todd Gurley situation because Todd Gurley is still an NFL free agent. And it's rumored, again, I want to say rumored, um, that he is very close to signing a deal with the Detroit Lions and reuniting with Jared Goff. Uh, What are your thoughts on that? Um, It makes me very happy. Um, You know, I think... Anybody who's been following my content knows I'm higher on the Lions than uh, some. I've kind of become somewhat of a fan of theirs. And it's weird because I've always really liked them because of Stafford. And then now Stafford's leaving and I like them. But uh, it's not because of Stafford leaving, obviously. I do kind of want to support Jared Goff still. Uh, I do feel like Jared Goff and Sean McVay just didn't really work together after a bit. You know, I think... McVay got figured out and then tried to change a lot of the offense and uh you know then Goff couldn't kind of you know get to that level with him so I am rooting for Goff um Michael Brockers is a no-brainer it really pisses me off quite frankly uh that he couldn't have won a Super Bowl with the Rams and uh I really like the coaches you know Aubrey Pleasant obviously uh you know really like um you know Dan Campbell I I like Anthony um Lynn who was the Chargers coach. They won four straight and then he got fired, uh, whatever. Um, and I really like Brad Holmes. So, and, and TJ Hawkinson. So, I mean, there are guys all over the, the roster that I like. I mean, guys I haven't even mentioned. But uh, now Todd Gurley enters the fray. And I know the, the fantasy football Twitter people are absolutely losing their minds because of, uh, well, I mean, for one reason and one reason only, DeAndre Swift. And I will say this, Todd Gurley is going to be an end zone vulture. Todd Gurley is going to be a short down yardage uh, stud, but Todd Gurley isn't going to take away all the carries from Swift. So Swift just has to make the most of them. I think that's really what's pissing off fantasy fans. But the fact of the matter is this, the Lions want to win football games and they're not tanking like people wanted them to. Uh, People need to realize that they've stuck by Goff. They drafted Penny Sewell. They have a good looking offensive line for the most part. Now, when you look at what they have on the defense, you know, they actually are building a solid roster. Now you look at the running back group and you see Swift, you see Jamal Williams. Now you go out and potentially get Todd Gurley. And to me, like I said, Todd Gurley's biggest issue is his long speed because he doesn't have the burst of speed that he used to. He can't run like that anymore because of his knee. It's unfortunate. It's actually really hard to to watch. It's sad. Uh, but let's not forget this guy was top three in rushing uh, halfway through the year before Dirk Cutter benched him. The yards per carry weren't great, but he was still top three in rushing. So that tells me that Todd Gurley can still obviously play in this league. He's just not a full-time back, and he's not a guy that's going to house an 80-yard touchdown like he could with the Rams early on. But now you look at Todd Gurley and I think he's going to know his role. If he's looking to sign with the lions, 
And that tells me that he's basically given in to the fact that he knows he's not a every down back anymore. He's not a starter. He tried that in Atlanta. It didn't work out. And now he's going to be in a rotation with Swift. He can play that veteran role to, uh, you know, mentor Swift. They both went to Georgia. And then on top of that, you have Jamal Williams who can help you in the passing game. Todd Gurley is not going to really help you in the passing game anymore, but he is good as a uh, pass protector. So that's also something to keep in mind. And again, he's automatic when it comes to red zone carries. He's very, very good red zone back, which I think people have forgotten. Yeah. I mean, my assumption, um, and this is something that I think you touched on when we did our schedule preview as well, that the Detroit lions are going to be a run first team. Um, that's just kind of the reality with Jared Goff. Um, I mean, I think they're going to try and run the ball as much as possible. And I think what they're going to do is they're going to do a running back by committee with DeAndre Swift, Jamal Williams, and Todd Gurley. I think that that's what they're looking to do. They're just going to pound the football. They're going to take the pressure off of Jared Goff. And I think that obviously Todd Gurley probably knows that. That's probably been discussed um, in, in his conversations with the team. Now, the, the Lions did uh, draft Jamar Jefferson um, in the seventh round, and yeah. then they did sign Rakeem Boyd as a free agent. I don't think that that necessarily matters. I think they're obviously still very interested in bringing on Todd Gurley and creating that running back by committee, especially because remember their, their wide receiver situation is not great. I mean, they had, they drafted uh, Amon Ra St. Brown in the fourth round, which was a great pickup for them. And then they have Tyrell Williams and Brashad Perryman. I mean, that is their top three, which is not great. And that leads us into the next free agent topic, which is Julio Jones, because Julio Jones uh, has said that he is out of Atlanta. He obviously said that in an unofficial capacity. He said that in a phone call uh, with Shannon Sharp. Highly unprofessional, which was very. Yeah, I I thought that that was that that to me was unprofessional because there was no indication that Julio was told beforehand that he was on air, which is like kind of rule number one when you do that type of thing. Um, But regardless, that's what he said. We know that to be the truth. Um, You know, the sources, NFL sources have not, uh, you know, contradicted that they kind of agree that, that Julio's out of Atlanta. Now the Detroit lions are a very reasonable destination for Julio Jones. Now, is that great for Julio Jones? And is that probably his first choice? No, because the joke is Detroit is where players go to die. And I think Julio Jones probably knows that. Um, However, when you look at at need, the Detroit Lions need a a receiver like Julio Jones. Like I said, those three guys that I mentioned are nowhere near that level. And honestly, none of the guys that I mentioned are a quote-unquote wide receiver one. Amon Ross St. Brown, I really like him. Maybe in a few years could take on that position. Right now, Detroit Lions are basically playing with three to four wide receiver threes. So this is a team that I expect to be very interested uh, in Julio Jones. Do I think that they're going to grab him? No. I still think the Titans and the Patriots are, are going to be you know, the forerunners for the Julio Jones sweepstakes. Uh, but Jake, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, you know, I I think somebody like Tyrell Williams actually uh, intrigues me. Um, You know, I think they signed him to be the guy, uh, the number one receiver. He is a a former thousand yard receiver. Uh, He dealt with some injuries, um, but he offers, you know, a deep threat that, you know, not everybody offers. Uh, He's averaged over 15 yards per reception um, in every single season. He's a 16.1 uh, yards per reception guy for his career has over 3000 receiving yards. And last year he missed because of the COVID opt out. So I think they think they have something in him. Then you have Brashad Perriman who can really stretch the field. Um, so what this tells me, and they also have Quintez Cephas, what that tells me um, looking at that is that they, they got Jerry Goff, a bunch of running backs, potentially Todd Gurley is going to add that. Um, and what they are going to do is they're going to have a bunch of guys that can stretch the field. and They're going to make it honestly a little bit like the Cal offense. Like, look at the way that they are building this offense. They have TJ Hawkinson, who is their best receiver. Uh, he's not a wide receiver, but he's their best receiver. Um, but then you have those guys and they all stretch the field very well. So I think, 
you know, Quintez Cephas being the most well-rounded receiver, not necessarily like a field stretcher. I mean, just look at like Brashad Perriman, 21.3 yards per reception in 2018, 17.9 in 2019, and 16.8 in 2020. Like you could see what they're doing is that they're they're loading up on the run game like we were talking about, but they're actually going to be wanting Jared Goff to stay in the play action game, which makes sense. And they're going to have him thrown deep down the field to those guys. And I think that's ultimately what they're planning on doing Um, with Julio Jones to me, Alexis, uh, from what I'm hearing. And again, my source could be wrong, uh, but from what I'm hearing is that the Titans are good. They like Des Fitzpatrick a lot. They like Joshua Reynolds a lot. And they really like uh, A.J. Brown, of course, obviously. Um, so there, I do not, from what I've gathered, is that I don't believe John Robinson is going to make a trade. But the Patriots, I'm hearing different. I'm hearing that the Patriots could make that trade. The Patriots do feel like they can compete. They added a bevy of help on the defense and the offense. Whether it's Mac Jones or Cam Newton, quite frankly, they could go two quarterbacks uh, with Cam Newton being the goal line uh, quarterback, um, you know, b- basically used in run situations, and Mac Jones being the guy everywhere else. Uh, that's certainly a possibility. It's something that uh, Ben Albright threw around, a friend of our show. Um, what I'll say is that first off, they should start Mac Jones, and second, I think they should get Julio. I think it, it's a no brainer. I talked about this on my stream. You offer a first round pick and uh, you know, Nikhil Harry, because right now, look, you just you just signed Kendrick Bourne. You just signed Nelson Aguilar. You just signed Hunter Henry. You just signed Johnny Smith. Uh, Nikhil Harry, he hasn't developed. Like he's now, it's a loaded wide receiver group and he's getting kicked out. So, you know, to me, I think the Falcons would want a young receiver to develop in return. Uh, look, former first round pick and Nikhil Harry, I'm not as high on him as others, but I do think he could maybe pan out, you know, having. Matt Ryan throwing him the football and being around, you know, guys like Calvin Ridley and uh, Kyle Pitts and Russell Gage. But, you know, I do think that that would make a lot of sense because they get a first and a wide receiver, a young wide receiver to to develop. Um, And the Patriots, they get Julio Jones. And, you know, if we're talking about a rookie quarterback who, in my opinion, Mac Jones isn't pinpoint accurate. He's generally accurate. You're going to want to get him a Julio Jones, a guy with a catch radius, uh, so big it's off the charts uh, when you don't have it you know a pinpoint accurate quarterback and Mac Jones is not pinpoint accurate he's a good quarterback he's a solid prospect and to me I wouldn't be surprised if he won rookie of the year if he starts um, but to me he's not a pinpoint accurate one he's a generally accurate and it would make so much sense to go out and get Julio Jones because let's be honest here are we sleeping on the Patriots? Are we sleeping on Bill Belichick? They added so much to that defense. They went out and they got all sorts of guys. Matt Judon is one of them. Um, they still kept Stefan Gilmore. Everyone thought that they were going to trade him away. They're getting the COVID guys, the guys that opted out due to COVID, about 10 players. Uh, they have, you know, the two Michigan guys, Uche and uh, Chase Winovich. You know, like to me, they've done so much. Uh, at helping, and I believe they got Barmore as well. Uh, so they've done so much to help that defense out that I feel like then you look at the offense, they had the two best tight ends on the market. They go out and get a Julio Jones to go with Nelson Aguilar and Kendrick Bourne. I'm sorry. I think you're looking, and, and not to mention, I do like Jacoby Myers. And Damian Harris has turned into a stud running back, maybe a star if they let him be the guy. I mean... That offensive line, you know, you have Ted Karras as your backup now because you're able to get Andrews back. Michael on when you friend of the show had turned into a stud last year. You know, I I mean, they're they got uh, they got Trent Brown back. People forget that they have Isaiah Wynn. They are loaded like the Patriots. If if Mac Jones starts and can play well and they go out and get Julio Jones, the Patriots can make a run in the AFC. I agree. And I agree that the Patriots are the best fit for Julio Jones. Um, And I do think uh, they obviously have more to give the Falcons as well. Yes. Um, I think obviously to get Julio Jones, they're going to have to give. um, I mean, the Falcons won a first. I think now could they they take a a second? They here's what's interesting. I think that the Patriots have two guys that the 
Falcons could be interested in, obviously Nikhil Harry, and they also, I think, would be interested in Jacoby Myers, who is kind of underrated in my opinion. Now, I think that obviously if they're they're trading for Julio, trading Julio Jones, I think that their first choice would be Nikhil Harry. Um, but I do think that the Patriots might try and find a way to, to keep Harry because, I mean, if you had Nikhil Harry with Julio Jones and Nelson Aguilar – uh, and Kendrick Bourne, I mean, that's not half bad. And then remember that they also have Hunter Henry and Jonu Smith at tight end now. So the Patriots are in a very good position already. Julio Jones would only make them better. And I think that that is a situation Julio Jones wants to go into because he wants to win. And he's made that very clear. It's why he said he doesn't want to go to Dallas. Uh, <laughs> so we'll see. I mean, I my my thought is that he is going to be traded. Um and the last thing that, that we should talk about, the, you know, the last big piece of news here in free agency wise is Aaron Rodgers. Uh, the Aaron Rodgers situation it kind of goes up and down and has throughout this process. Not a lot of new stuff has come out. I mean, Aaron Rodgers did talk to Kenny Mayne uh, the other night and kept it very vague, but basically said that he loves his teammates and he loves the fans at Green Bay, whatever, kind of alluding to that, that if anything were to happen, it's not personal between him and the fans or him and his teammates. I mean, the, the issue is very obviously with the front office of Green Bay. And in my opinion, it stems from the Jordan Love pick. And I think people were hard on Aaron Rodgers for getting upset about the Jordan Love pick, but I don't think that he was necessarily upset by the pick. I think he was upset with the way it was handled. I think Aaron Rodgers felt that he got blindsided and that the Packers organization didn't clue him in to the fact that they were interested in taking a quarterback at all. You look at Alex Smith, who recently went on, um, the name is slipping my mind, but Al- Alex Smith, former quarterback of the, the Chiefs, uh, well, 49ers Chiefs uh, and Washington football team, just went on a show the other night. And he talked about how as a franchise quarterback, the organization typically is a sign of respect to clues you into what they're thinking. Uh, especially for the first round, especially if it's a quarterback. Alex Smith, uh, you know, stated that when the Chiefs were looking at Patrick Mahomes, Alex Smith knew the whole time. He knew months before the draft. He knew before the Chiefs even basically knew that it was Mahomes. He just knew that that situation was happening and they approached him with it. They said, this is what we're thinking. This is why, uh, you know, we want to be totally transparent. And Alex appreciated that. He didn't even say he agreed or not. He appreciated being clued into that that process. And Aaron Rodgers was clearly not um, informed at all in any capacity what the Packers were planning to do with Jordan Love. I think that's what he's upset about. I think he obviously was probably not pleased that they took a quarterback when they were probably a good wide receiver away from a Super Bowl run, uh, which I think they actually still were again. And then they ended up taking a corner in the first round of the draft this year. Uh, But at that point, I think they just their relationship with Aaron Rodgers is just already beyond repair. But I think that we should be a little bit easier on Aaron Rodgers. Again, we don't know that neither the Packers or Aaron Rodgers has said explicitly what has happened. So we, we have no way of confirming this. We can only use what quote unquote sources say in, in the eye test on this. And my opinion is that things probably already weren't great between Aaron Rodgers and the Packers organization. And then they took Jordan Love without telling him, which I think really rubbed him the wrong way. And then they haven't done anything for him since then either. They still still haven't taken a top receiver. They haven't really signed anybody. And I think Aaron Rodgers, for better or for worse, uh, has had it. And I think it's going to be really interesting to see where he can go. Uh, Jake, I want to hear your thoughts on the situation um, as well and where you think he can go. I've been pretty open that I think he's interested in Denver, but I want to hear your thoughts on this. So I will answer that question uh, once we come back from our break. But for now, a word from our sponsor, Manscaped, and we'll be right back. Manscaped is the only men's brand dedicated to below-the-waist grooming and just launched their Lawnmower 4.0. Imagine surprising your dad with a sleek, well-designed, and optimized body hair trimmer that says your balls will thank you on the box. Their fourth-generation trimmer features a cutting-edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin-safe technology. 
You might ask, how is this lawnmower 4.0 different than other trimmers? Well, this upgraded trimmer includes a multifunction on and off switch that can engage a travel lock. This is a great feature if your father or yourself do a lot of traveling. It also gives you the ability to turn the 4000 LED spotlight on and off when needed for a more precise shave. You can now shave your balls in the dark. The Lawnmower 4.0 even allows you to customize your trim through additional guard lengths with sizes 1 through 4. The new wireless charging system uses electromagnetic induction, which can help battery length last longer. Yeah, you heard that right. Wireless charging ball trimmers are a real thing now. Have you ever seen a nose bush sticking out of your dad's nose? Well, the Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer is the best nose hair trimmer on the market and the perfect gift for your pops. They also have other amazing products like cologne, crop mop, ball wipes, which are pretty awesome, crop reviver, which is a ball toner, crop preserver, which is ball deodorant, literally just found out that was a thing. For all the females listening, you'll appreciate this part. Manscaped products are cruelty-free, paraben-free, dye-free, and vegan. Get 20% off and free shipping with promo code DTR at manscaped.com and get your dad a gift you know they will use. That's 20% off, free shipping at manscaped.com and use promo code DTR. Don't forget, you came from your dad's balls this year. Show your original home some love with Manscaped. Yeah, I mean, I saw him with uh shailene woodley and miles teller and i just found out miles teller's 34 years old which i mind blown on that um but with everything going on you know i think aaron Rodgers, in my personal opinion uh is not at fault for feeling this way i know there's you know people are always going to dog on him but when you think about it i mean this is somebody he was left in the green room he was the guy that was passed up on you know and he's the guy that had to wait and i feel like you know, you never want to be the, the first quarterback picked and you never want to be the last. And Rodgers was the last because he was left in the green room in the first round. And those quarterbacks always get the publicity. You look at Big Ben, you look at Johnny Manziel, I mean, even Dan Marino, you know, and I feel like ever since then he's had this shadow, especially, you know, playing, uh, you know, backing up Brett Favre and waiting for his turn for all those years and then actually playing, And to me, like he's always gotten this bad reputation. I've only ever seen good things from him, but the media just for whatever reason has always dogged on him. And it's not even just sports related. It's even been about his family. So I just think it's another one of those things uh, where, you know, he can't really catch a break. Um, I think, you know, some people are threatened of the fact that he is better than Tom Brady. um, And, you know, they don't like that someone is better than the guy that they call the goat. Um, But the fact of the matter is this. The Packers should have more than one Super Bowl with Aaron Rodgers. And the way that we judge players is all about rings. Whether it's fair or not, this is how it is. I know it's how it is because everyone's automatically calling Brady the GOAT every time. The fact of the matter is this. They only judge you by winning rings. Why would Rodgers want to stay in an organization that drafts quarterbacks instead of offensive weapons and doesn't win football games like I mean here's like he threw three touchdowns and threw one interception and they lost like they lost to the the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on the other side of the thing he's looking at Tom Brady going to however many Super Bowls he's been to and he's going to the Super Bowl and he has had a top 10 defense in all but two seasons in his career. And Aaron Rodgers has had literally two top 10 defenses in his career. Aaron Rodgers best receiver didn't come to him until he was 33 enough with the, you know, Jordy Nelson, Randall Cobb stuff. He got Devonte Adams, who is the best receiver he's had when he turned 33. So in my opinion, Rodgers has every reason to be annoyed. He's stuck by this organization. He signs contract after contract. And now he he feels as though they're not addressing. He doesn't have enough. He doesn't have enough say in the offense. He doesn't have enough say, uh, you know, with the team direction. And I get that. I mean, you could argue he's the best player in football after Aaron Donald. I mean, you know, he's right up there at Patrick Mahomes. So I get it. 
I get it. And before we close this out, I want to, I want to say something that might be, might be a little crazy, but I don't think it's that crazy. If Aaron Rodgers wants it, I think he can end up a New England Patriot this season. Oh, I absolutely. And here, and here's here's my thought process behind this. Okay, I know they have Cam Newton. I know they took Mac Jones. The Patriots would sit Mac Jones for a season or two to play Aaron Rodgers. And they w- that's a reality. It's actually and they brilliant because they wouldn't have to trade Mac Jones either. Exactly. Exactly. They wouldn't have to trade Mac Jones. They could trade Cam Newton away to to the Packers. Um, the Packers would still obviously start jo- Jordan Love, but they would have Cam Newton to fall back on. And the Patriots have weapons. Because here's the thing. Aaron Rodgers to Denver, I know that that is, quote unquote, the most logical choice. I know that that is supposedly where he has interest in. The Broncos don't have the weapons the Patriots have by far. Uh, the Broncos, that's, that's honestly splitting hairs at that point. I, I don't think that they do. I, I mean, they've got guys like... They have some young guys who are good. I'll give them that credit. But if you're looking at a win now, if you're looking at win next season, if Aaron Rodgers wants his best chance at winning a Super Bowl ring in 2021-2022 season, he's going to the New England Patriots. He's going to Bill Belichick. He's going to the team that is arguably stacked. And listen, if I'm Mac Jones, if I'm Bill Belichick, I don't care if Mac Jones sits for two seasons. If I'm Mac Jones, I'm saying I want to win a ring ne- soon. I want to start off my career good. Come here, Aaron Rodgers. I'll sit behind you for two seasons, three seasons, however long Aaron Rodgers has left, because let's be honest, he's getting up there and come win a ring uh, in New England. So I know that people think that that's far-fetched because they say that the Patriots aren't going to go after Aaron Rodgers. They have Newton and they have Mac Jones and da da da. I don't think it's that far-fetched. I think it makes a lot of sense. Oh, no one would stop I, me from trading for Rodgers. No way. No. And and like I said, they would have to get rid of Newton. Um, I mean, they'd probably have to – I think they would probably have to get rid of Newton in like maybe a first or, or two firsts. But like do you really care if you're the Patriots? Uh, R- I mean, Rogers Aaron Rodgers – like an astronaut. I mean, you'd probably have to give up three or four first-round picks. Like it's one yeah, of those like but, he's a priceless ad. Like we, But I know. think that they – with the team the Patriots have right now, that's a Super Bowl. Well, yeah, and I, I think, you know, when you, when you look at, I think Miami would be an option too. I don't know if he's on their list, but you know, Miami potentially. Is there. I don't. Denver has great weapons in Cortland Sutton, Jerry Judy. They have KJ Hamler. They have Noah Fant, and they they just added Javante Williams with arguably. What could end up being the best offensive line in all of football? Mike Munchak is amazing, and he's gotten the most out of Garrett Bowles. They have Reisner, they have uh, Cushenberry. They added, uh, you know, that the kid, the third, what was his name, the D three guy that no one could stop talking about, Quinn Miners. Uh, you know, it's like they're kind of loaded on the offensive line. I mean, they he could go there, he could go to Miami, he can go to. I don't think he plays in Green Bay. I think this is serious i'm just hoping he doesn't go to uh he doesn't go to the 49ers and i also low-key hope he doesn't go to the seahawks because i could see russell wilson for aaron Rodgers trade i've mentioned that as well because there is that wisconsin connection with russell wilson yeah and he's not happy in seattle or that's at least been the reporting so i could see just a straight up trade for them both which i obviously hope doesn't happen um because i don't want aaron Rodgers in my division when big quarterbacks uh, something i want when big quarterbacks get traded alexis most of the time because you have to facilitate that contract it involves a quarterback and a quarterback matthew stafford yeah. and jared goff you know i mean carson wentz no but you know remember uh, Bradford and Foles. I mean, mm-hmm. it happens. And so I think that there's a real chance that we could be seeing a massive quarterback trade. And we'll have to keep an eye on, on you know, the Deshaun Watson thing, you know, yeah. because that also, you know, they could trade him. Um, Rodgers would never go to Houston. I mean, they're going to be a dumpster fire, probably the worst team in football. But, you know, yeah. when you deal with Rodgers, I mean, if a team loves their quarterback, but is looking at Aaron Rodgers and thinks that they're better than that said quarterback, they might just take a chance. You just, you yeah. don't know. Desperate teams, you know? 
So, well, we'll see. I mean, that's obviously a big story. Um, I'm sure that we'll talk about it again at some point. I mean, there's not a ton of movement there as of right now, but who knows? Maybe we wake up tomorrow and Aaron Rodgers is no longer a Green Bay Packer. Uh, but that's going to do it for this episode, guys. Uh, we just wanted to touch base because there there was uh, a few big stories going around uh, about NFL free agency. We just figured we would give our two cents and, and discuss those as everyone else has been. Um, as always, if you like what you hear, please like and subscribe. You can follow us on social media at Downtown Rams. You can follow me on Twitter at the Alexis Craft. You can follow Jake at at JK Bogan. Um, and until next time, guys, stay safe, take care, and go Rams. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code DTR at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and make sure to use code DTR. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped.